Hey hi everyone, Phil here and today's question is on OLS in simple linear regression. We're doing part A, obtain estimates beta 0, beta 1 by OLS. We're going to write down the OLS regression line and I'm going to do a prediction. Alright, so to get the parameter estimates, first we ask ourselves for what model are these the parameters for? Well, it's over here, right up here. So wage is my dependent variable, Edu or education is my explanatory variable. This looks like something out of a Waldridge textbook. And it's a simple linear regression model. Got some data here. Now you might have the, in your formula sheet the um, expressions for OLS estimates for the slope and intercept for such a for simple linear regression model if you don't just memorize it. So here is the intercept. It's the correct decimal of squares for x and y which is right over here divided by corrected total, the corrected sum of squares for x which is over here and so that's the calculation the parameter estimate for the intercept is given by the mean of the dependent variable minus the uh, estimate of the slope multiplied by the mean of the explanatory variable and that's the calculation very easy. should note here that there's a clash of notation here. Um, wage is actually my y and education is the x. Anyway, it just assumes that you always know that y is the t point variable and x is the uh, explanatory variable. Write down the OLS regression line, otherwise known as write down the fitted line or estimated line. Okay, so I've written it down like this. I'm not quite finished yet. Okay, if you look very closely, you realize I have made an error. What I need to do is I've got to put a hat on this wage. Now, why is that? Because, guys, this is an estimate of this parameter, the intercept. This number here is an estimate. I've got to be careful, we'll realize they're estimates, yeah? They're guesses of the slope. And therefore, if I calculate this right hand side, this object must be the, an estimate of this. So I put a hat on it to denote that this is not the same as that, although they should be close, hopefully, anyway. An alternative way of writing this line, but th this first option I gave you is better, is to do this, like some of you have been taught, is to have that as the true wage, observed wage, and add onto this the residual. So just denote it by something, you know, residual. When we want to use the model for prediction, it's probably cleaner, easier if we stick to the first notation, uh, first way of writing down to like that. Okay, next question, final question, write down a predicted wage given that many years of education. Just means like, just substitute for education that number and work out the right hand side, which gives me this. Okay, now I'm not done here because now it's the difference between doing a theoretical question and an applied question. This is an applied question. What are the units of wage? It's in dollars. So we've got that many dollars, but it doesn't make sense to say four dollars seventeen point eight cents, right? So what we could say is really depends now on the, um, the answer we give. It really depends on why are we doing this prediction. So we could answer it like a few ways. I could say, oh, you know, it's about four dollars twenty cents. Or I could say oh it's between four dollars seventeen and four dollars eighteen. Or I could say it's four dollars eighteen cents rounded up to the nearest cent. If you just want an S you know, just the crude guess you four dollars twenty will do. If you're a company and you're actually using this and you're gonna hire loads and loads of employees, these cents matter. So then you might be a bit more refined. You might just say, oh, it's, it's going to be $4.17 to $4.18. I think so long as you give the justification, you're all right. So um, an answer like $4.18 rounded up to the nearest cent should, uh, should suffice. But it would not be okay to write $14.17.8. Right, it's, uh, I've got one remark and then I have actually got two questions for you guys so it's your turn. Right, first remark is often students ask how many decimal places do we quote to? Look at this, look at that. Well what I notice here guys is that look at all these numbers 
they're to three decimal places. So uh, when I do the prediction, I guess I'm going to aim for three decimal, go for three decimal places as well. And that means when an intermediary working, I should do everything to more than three decimal places. So I'm going to do it to four decimal places. That's why here I've got four decimal places, here I've got four decimal places. So when I finally do the calculation for the prediction of wage, um, I get it to uh, round it up to three decimal places. Yeah, and if you check, if you just do this, you'll find that the fourth decimal value is uh, zero. That's why I put just 0.178. All right, now, guys, it's your turn. We can discuss this on YouTube. Get you to think a bit. Question one. Suppose that this model is the true model. Would you kind of think that your um, prediction of wage is reasonable? If you do pass paper questions, you'll kind of... Uh, recognize my question there. It's quite a common one to ask. Second, guys, uh, I could have given you the prediction of for wage given this years of education without doing anything, without doing any of this calculation, right? You know, finding any of this estimates and finding without finding the li estimated line. How? Basically, yeah, I could have just written down the answer without doing any calculation. Right, hint for that, guys, is do you notice something very peculiar about years of education? You know, it's very specific, isn't it? Why not 12 years or 13 years? Okay, discuss. I don't have any prizes to give out, but I guess you'll feel a great sense of understanding if you can answer my final question.